Hi. Hi, Archie. Thank you for fixing your camera. I am so happy to see you. <laughs> I'm upset this week. I'm so sorry. I missed you so much. And I'm really excited we get to start a new story today. So I have one more video that I will do for Christmas in Camelot. And when I have that ready, I will let you know. But I thought for today, we would go ahead and start the Minecraft book that we picked out called Deep Dive, okay? Last week, last week I was getting my classroom ready for students to come. They are coming in two days on Wednesday. So last week was a very busy day at school for setting up classrooms, having meetings with other teachers, just so many things to do. I could not get 26 hours in one day. You know how many hours are in one day? No. Take a guess. Think about a clock. A clock starts at 12 and it goes all the way around to 12 and then it goes all- 12 the hours. How many? 12 hours. True, but in one day, it has to go all the way around two times. You know what 12 hours plus 12 hours is? Uh, 24. That's right. So there are 24 hours in one day. And I needed all 24. In fact, I wished that I could have 26 or 27. Is that possible? No. <laughs> everybody, oh, everybody gets 24 and that's it. Nobody gets more, nobody gets less. We all but have. 20. I tell you, Earth, one year on Earth is, is how many? I forgot. How many days in one year? Yes. Starts with a three. Three, five, six. Almost. Switch the five and the six. Three, six, five. Mm -hmm. Yes, how we say that number. Uh, 365. That's right. And, and on our Mars, uh, our Mars, one year is, do you know how many? Uh, no, but I think it's more than 365. It is 600 and I forgot. 600, but more than 600. All right, Six, let's, let's uh, take a note that we'll check on that. And tomorrow, when we meet, let's see if one of us can remember, okay, from Mars. That's a very good thing to know. All right, are you ready to see this book? Let me share the screen with you. Oh, I love seeing your smile. Okay, here it comes. Here it is. This is Minecraft Deep Dive. And I have the book right here. Can you see it up in the little window? Yes. And so this book is actually part of a series. And this is not the first book in the series. I think it's the third or fourth book in the series. I'm not sure. So we are going to meet some characters first thing. In fact, I'm going to turn the page and we will see the characters. Now, these characters, this is how they look in the printed book. But I also have the ebook, and it's a little bit easier to see them here. So we'll look at this page for looking at the characters. So we can see on this page there are seven characters. But these two down here are teachers. They are the adults. So we're not, we will not look at them yet. We're going to look at the other. Well, let me see if we have seven characters and two are adults, how many are kids? Five. 
That's right. So let's take a look at these five. Now, this person is Morgan. Do you see how he looks here and here? He does not look the same. Do you know why? Oh, your microphone is off. Because it is Minecraft. Yeah, which one? Do you think it's the one on the left or the one on the right? Right. The one on the right is how he looks in the Minecraft world because the Minecraft game, everything is made out of squares and blocks and sharp edges. There's nothing that's really round, right? There's nothing that's curved. I've noticed that. So in the real world, Morgan looks like this. But in the Minecraft world, he's going to look like this. And in this story, these characters, these kids, they are going to spend some of their time in the real world and they will spend some of their time in the Minecraft world. And so this is how he will look in the Minecraft world. Right here, do you see this is a, it's a tool. Do you know what that is? Oh, I know. I don't know it English, but I know it. I do not know Minecraft well enough to tell you what tool this is, but it looks to me like it's something we would use for digging. No, it looks to me it is like I will draw it to you. Okay. All right, so we will need to. I will draw it to you. It looks like. I think it oh, is. you're doing that. I'm going to move on to our next character. So that was Morgan. The next character is Ash. Ash. And this is a girl. And we can see that, you know, when I look at what she looks like in the real world, I notice a few details about her. Something I notice is in her hand, it looks like she might have either, actually, I think that's a compass. I think we talked about a compass. Oh, in uh, Christmas in Camelot, one of the, was one of the gifts a compass? Or yes. they need to use a compass? Yes, so well, a gift. A compass is when, it's something you can use to find out what direction is north. So with a compass, you'd be, if you know where north is, then you can figure out where is east and south and west. So it looks, like, looks to me like she has a compass in her hand. And over here in this hand, I'm not super sure what that is, but... I think that is a map. A map? I was thinking that that might be a map. And when I look at this kind of a, a sash around her shoulder, from her shoulder to her hip, I, I think of the Girl Scouts, and I wonder if she is a scout. A scout is someone who learns how to go camping and use a compass and go hiking and be able to do a lot of things, especially outside. They're good explorers and good at discovering things. Okay, how's your picture coming? No, but I can't draw it. That's okay. Uh, I think it's a shovel. Yes, yeah, me too. You think it's a, a shovel? That's kind of what I'm thinking. And, and we didn't really look too much at Morgan. I noticed Morgan is wearing a backpack and carrying a lot of books. He makes me think of maybe someone who's a very good student who likes to study. Now, I noticed that Ash in real life, looks like she's a Girl Scout. And in the Minecraft world, I think I know what she's holding here. You know what this is? I know. This is called a bow, and you would use yeah. it to shoot arrows. 
So we call that bow and arrows. And that activity is called archery. In fact, archery was in the Olympics this, this year. So archery is, it's almost like your name, Archie. Archery, archery is when you use a bow and arrow and you try to hit a target. Okay, then we have Harper. Now, I am going to take a guess that Harper is a girl. I see two clues. One clue, you can't always be sure because some boys wear earrings, but I see earrings here. And I also over here, I think that might be a bow in her hair. Me too, I think she is a girl. But we can keep an eye out during the story for if they use pronouns for her, then they would be she and her. So this is Harper and it looks like she also maybe likes to study. I'm not sure, but she's carrying a bunch of books, has on a backpack. And, in and there's a pencil on the ear. Oh, right, good, very good clue, yeah. Good job noticing that. And then in the Minecraft world, do you know what tool this is? Yes, I know. You pick it up and you and the and you can just break a break a wood door. Yeah, I think this might be called a pickaxe. I'm not sure if I spelled pickaxe correct, but I know some boys who are Minecraft wizards. They they're like a Minecraft encyclopedia. So I might double check with them on some of these tools. Okay, so that's Harper. Now up here is something interesting about Poe is in real life, what can you tell us? He cannot stand. That's right, he's in a wheelchair. But what does it look like he likes to do in real life? Uh, play basketball. That's right. And then do you notice over here in the Minecraft world, is he in a wheelchair? Nope. No, so what does that tell us? In Minecraft world, he can stand. Stand, yeah. I'm not sure what we see here. I, I remember from this one, you know, it's interesting. They've got a different, they have a different picture for Poe here <laughs> in the book. The one in the book, do you see uh, right here? I think he, you know, do you know how he's dressed? <laughs> I think he's dressed to go in the water. I think he has a little, a little rubber ducky, a little um, inner tube floaty right here. And I think he, he has, I think he has a snorkel right here for snorkeling and a mask. And I think this right here might be a um, life preserver or a life jacket, something that I think these things are helping him be in the water. And down here, I think he has flippers on. So I think here he's dressed to go in the water. In this one, I'm not really sure what it's saying. He looks almost, I don't know, I was going to say a fire. I was going to, I almost was going to say a fireman because of the hat, but I don't know about this here. No, how is that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out in the story. But I'll give you some clue. Go on at the pole. I will just write it. You write it on the, the there. Write it where? Here. You see this? Are you sending me a chat? Yes. Oh, you're writing right on it. I see. Yep. That's like a shield, right? Yes. I have to remember that I guess a shield in Minecraft world would be like a square or a rectangle. Yes. It almost looks like he's wearing, I don't know, a dress or a cloak or a, you know, those aren't pants. So, not quite sure. I'm still not quite sure what that is. And doesn't it look like on this um, shield or whatever it is, it looks like almost like a cat. So, does 
that look like a cat to you? Or a tiger? Yes. So I'm not sure. Well, let's take a look at the fifth character. This is Jody. And something I notice about her in the real world is she, I think, likes to draw, likes to draw pictures. What well, I don't know what this is in her hair. A pencil. A pencil? Maybe. She looks like someone who likes to have fun and is happy. And over here in Minecraft world, she looks kind of like a superhero. Yeah. Right? Ready to save the day. <laughs> and then down here, we have these two um, characters. This one is called Ms. Minerva, and she is a teacher. And this one is Doc Culpepper. I think that she is the science teacher. You can see that she's doing science experiments and it looks like she's having fun doing those science experiments. I think that those glasses or goggles on her head are not doing any good unless she puts them over her eyes. All right, so these are the players. Notice how they're not calling these characters, they are calling them players because Minecraft is a game. So the characters in the game are called players. This is um, the very beginning of the story and you'll see this word right here says prologue, just like Magic Treehouse has a prologue at the beginning. It's the chapter that comes before chapter one. So it's information that is important for us, the reader, to know before we start the story. And this especially happens in books that are part of a series. Because when a book is part of a series, like book one, book two, book three, book four, Many times there's a kind of a big problem that goes from beginning of the series to the end of the series. And so there might be some things that happened in earlier books that are important for us to know. Kind of like when we did Midnight on the Moon and we needed to know that Jack and Annie had to find four things that began with the letter M in order to free their friend Morgan. So this prologue says, and Notice how the title of the prologue is the letters are almost hard to read. These are kind of a Minecraft style letters where everything is kind of blocky, like lots of blocks and little squares. So this says, in which X marks the spot of a place no one in their right mind would want to visit. Now the author of this book, his name is, oh, it's written by two people. Nick and Luke. They love to be really funny with the titles of the chapters. So, and sometimes the titles of the chapters seem like they don't make any sense. I have to kind of think about it for a minute to understand what are they trying to be funny about. Well, in this title of the prologue, there are two phrases that we need to look at for just a minute. X marks the spot. That's the first one. Have you ever heard that phrase before? Remember, a phrase is a group of words. So X marks the spot. That's four words together. It has a meaning, especially when we're talking about a treasure map. Have you ever seen or heard about a treasure map? Oh, your microphone is off. Nothing. <laughs> Well, for example, if you find an old map and it says, this is where you are, and then it says, over here is a treasure. If you can find it, and then they make an X. It says X marks the spot of where the treasure is. And then you have to see if you can get from where you are to where the treasure is. Okay, so we often use this phrase in English, X marks the spot to show where you might find some treasure or something really special and valuable that you would be very excited to find. So X marks the spot of a place no one in their right mind. What in the world does that mean? 
in your right mind. I mean, our mind is our brain. We only have one brain. So what does it mean to be in your right mind? What do you think that means? I don't know. Yeah, that's because it's a crazy Oh, right thing. mind. My right mind. You mean the right side versus the left side? You know, it is true that the, the, there's a lot of research that says the right side of your brain can do things that the left side of your brain isn't as good at. I'm trying to remember, one side is really good at being creative. I think it might be the right side. And one side is really good at like math. I, I can't remember, I used to know with the left and the right. But this meaning of this phrase is not about the left and right side of your brain. This right does not mean right or left. This right is talking about right or wrong. And so when it says in their right mind, it means, are you thinking clearly? Are you making good choices? Are you um, making good decisions? Or are you not thinking at all? Are you being crazy? So here they're saying, if, if X marks the spot of a place that no one in their right mind would want to visit, that means anybody who's good at thinking and thinking clearly and making good decisions would not want to go to this place. No one. But only the people who are not in their right mind, the people who are a little bit crazy, just want to have adventure, don't care if it's safe or dangerous, aren't really thinking about it, just say, let's go. They're the ones that might like to find this place where X marks the spot. So that's kind of an interesting title to the prologue. We're only going to read the prologue today, so I'm going to go ahead and read it. It says, five figures, a figure would be a character, okay? Five figures floated, oh, wait a minute, hang on, yes. Woo! Thank you, look what I got. <laughs> yummy, yummy, do you know what these are? Yeah? Chocolate. Yes. Have you ever had one of these? Nope, my mom didn't give me to eat. Yeah, well that's because kids are not supposed to eat this much sugar makes them go a little like, oh, and then the moms go, oh. Yes, but I, I love it, but you don't give me to eat it. That's because you have a smart mom who loves you very much. <laughs> okay, Archie, are you ready? We have two pages to read, okay? Here we go. All right, five figures. That means five characters. Have we talked about five characters so far today? Yes. Seven, and then we went down to five. Who were the five? Were they the adults or the kids? The kids. Yeah, so I have a feeling because this is the number five and we just looked at five kids, I bet this might be those five. That's what comes to my mind. Five figures floated in a vast sea of blue, a vast sea of blue. Vast means very, very, very big. So what do you think could be a vast sea, S-E-A, is not the same as I see you. Vast sea of blue. What do you think they're talking about? I'll start it's a right big here. sea and the sea is all blue. Yeah, but what's another word for the big blue sea? I'll start writing it and you see if you can guess what it is. Ocean. The ocean. The ocean is a vast sea of blue. If you're st standing on the edge of the ocean and you look out across the ocean, you will not see the other side of it. All right, five figures floated in a vast sea of blue in the ocean. Below them was a strange structure. This word is a little bit hard to say. Structure. Can you say it? 
Oh, your microphone is off. Let me say it one more Struck time. Sure. Struck. Sure. Struck. Sure. So where I'm going to split it is right here after the C. So we really make that C a good hard C with that k sound. Struck. Struck. There's a big blend at the beginning. Struck. 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 And then this part over here, you know how sometimes the suffix T-I-O-N, well, not sometimes, all of the time, do you know how the T-I-O-N makes, it kind of sounds like the shh, and then sort of like this, right? Shun, shun. Well, that T in the T-I-O-N is making that shh. And here, struck shh. Sure, this is also making that sh sound. So it's struck, sure, structure, structure. You want to try it again? Oh, your microphone is off. Structure, structure, yeah. structure. And a structure is a building. Okay, so he, you can see here in this picture, we can see these kids or figures, there's one, two, three, four, five. And below them, that means going this way, underneath them is a big structure or building, or we're gonna find out another word for that structure. So uh, I think on this page, yes, on this page, one or even two more words, see if you can find it. Okay, below them was a strange structure. It was unlike anything that existed on Earth. Part pyramid and part fortress. A fortress is like a castle or a fort, something that you can hide behind and you will be protected if an enemy is coming and wants to attack and you're in a fortress, it is going to be very hard for that enemy to get to you because the fortress is going to be really strong and it's going to protect you. And the enemy will not be able to just knock it over very easily. And so if you want to be protected from an enemy, you want to be in a fortress. So this structure looks part pyramid Remember, the shape of a pyramid is kind of like a triangle and part fortress. Okay, so a little bit, it kind of does both things, a little bit of both. It squatted on the sea floor, that would be the bottom of the ocean, and stretched far into the distance. So it's very big. The structure was a gross, that means disgusting, shade of green. It looked almost poisonous. Now, if you see this word poisonous, we can find inside here the word poison. Well, poison is bad. If we were to drink some poison, we would probably either die or go to the hospital and be very sick. Poison is very dangerous. So poisonous means something very dangerous, not friendly, not safe, not good for us, and so for some reason, the color green that this structure is made them think of poison, something dangerous, something not friendly, okay? No one in their right mind would want to go here. But the structure was also grand. Grand means like, wow, fancy, just amazing, just something that makes your, your jaw drop open with like, wow, it all but dared them to enter. This is kind of an interesting sentence. Have you ever heard in English someone say, I dare you? No. Nope. No, well, I'm kind of glad about that, actually. I don't really like it that much when someone says to someone else, I dare you. Because when someone says that, it means they want you to do something 
that you are smart enough to not do. So if you're looking at something and, and you're thinking, okay, that's not a good choice. For example, let's say you and some friends are looking at a river that is moving very, very fast and there's rocks in it. And, and your friends are saying, gee, I wonder if we should jump into the river and cool off. And you might look at that river and think, no, that would not be a good idea. It does not look safe. We could hit our head on a rock. The water's moving fast. We don't know anything about it. I'm going to use my brain, think about everything I can see, all the information I have, and make a decision that jumping into that river is not safe, not a good idea, so I'm not going to do it. And then your friend could say, I dare you. So what they're saying is, if you want to prove that you're not a chicken, that you're not scared, that you're cool and that you're brave and that you're, you know, um, just that you have courage, then you're going to jump in, even if you think it's a bad idea. So they want you to not use your brain to make a good, wise decision. They want you to do what they want you to do, to do some stupid, foolish thing, just to prove that you're not scared. So does that sound like a nice thing to say to somebody? I dare you? No, because then if you don't do it, then they're gonna make fun of you for being, you know, scared or chicken or, you know, which is not, that's not right, right? If you're making, if you're using your brain to make a good decision and then they find a way to make fun of you for, oh, you're so scared, they're not giving you credit for being a smart person who just made a good decision and used your brain. So instead they're trying to get you to do something foolish and kind of control you. And kids don't want someone to make fun of them. They don't want other people to say, oh, you're so scared. And so they feel pressured to do this kind of foolish thing. That's what it means when you say to someone, I dare you. Now, it's not always something that's foolish and dangerous, you know, it might just be something like um, maybe you have a new student in the class and your friend say, your friend says, why don't you go over and say hi to the new student? And, um, and you say, well, I don't know if I want to. And they could say, well, I dare you. You know, that's not as big of a deal, right? Because it's not dangerous to go say hello to someone. So, I don't think it's really, it's ever very kind for a person to say, I dare you. Um, it's not always trying to pressure you to do something stupid and foolish and dangerous, but it is pressuring you to do something that you really don't want to do. So in this sentence, we have, it all but dared them to enter. So this sentence is a little bit confusing, but what it's saying is that it looked dangerous, that green, it looked almost like a poisonous thing. And so they really thought it's not smart to go. It's not wise to go. No one in their right mind would go. But the fact that it looks so amazing and so grand and so wow, makes them like, I can't resist, but I have to go check it out. I'm so curious about it. The figures hovered quietly before it. Hovered means they're just kind of hanging, they're right, if you're hovering, you're not on the ground, your feet are not on the ground. So a helicopter can hover over the ground. They're in the ocean and they're not standing on the floor, the bottom of the ocean. So they're hovering, okay? They're kind of just hanging out in the water, not standing on anything. And there's something below them. So they are hovering above it. They couldn't talk underwater. How are you going to communicate? How are you going to get your ideas or your messages to someone else if you can't talk? What are they going to do? What are some, you could use sign language, you could use your face, your hands. But even if they could, the massive monument might have awed them into silence. This word monument is that other word for structure. So monument is another, it's like a building or a structure. 
Massive is a word that means very, 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 very big. So this is a massive monument, this structure, this place, this building that looks a little bit like a pyramid, maybe this part up here. Also like a fortress, you know, really strong, but it just seems a little dangerous. And so they're nervous about going. Do they want to go, but they're curious. So they don't know what's the right decision. Dangerous, maybe not wise, better stay away from it. Nobody in their right mind would go there. On the other hand, so cool looking and they're curious about it and they want this adventure and they want to go investigate it. What should they do? And they can't even talk about it. So the only sounds came from the air bubbles quietly purring, popping and gurgling around them. One of them held up a map. The map showed a big red X. They all looked from the monument to the map and back again. The figure with the map, <clears throat> this is one of the five kids, put it away and nodded in the direction of the structure. So he's nodding his head, kind of like, we're gonna go there, okay? Colorful sea creatures. A sea creature would be some sort of animal in the ocean drifted past. The five kicked their legs and swam deeper. The monument and all its many mysteries awaited. So they're going to the monument and that's where we're going to start chapter one tomorrow. We will find out what do they discover. I want to look at this book because I didn't have that book. We haven't, right. You haven't we haven't read this book before, right? I have not read like, this book. It's and I didn't have that book too. That's right. Sometimes you have already read the book before you and I start reading it together. And then you want to tell me everything that's going to happen. So mysteries, remember, is when there's something that we have so many questions about, but we don't have the answers. We can't explain it. We don't know why and how and what and who. So when we have questions that have not been answered, those are mysteries. Something else I wanted to show you here is that this book has some spelling that's used in England, but not in the United States. For example, this U right here, in the word colorful or color, the U is used in England, but not in the United States. So in the United States, color is C-O-L-O-R, <clears throat> that's color. And when we add the suffix F-U-L, it means full of color. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and put our star here. And what color would you like for your star? Blue. Blue. Blue it is. Okay. This is going to be an exciting story, however, we might have to do a little bit of research and learn about some things because I think to really understand everything going on in the story, it helps to have a lot of knowledge about Minecraft. And <clears throat> I have never played Minecraft, so I really have almost no knowledge. How about you? Me too. Yeah, so we might have to do research together, but I think it will be fun. So here's the book, and you can see here, those are the authors. They say this is an official Minecraft adventure. <clears throat> so. Okay. So long. Shatter Chip. Bye. Bye, Archie.